Hi everyone, it's Amy. Yeah, I haven't been on for a while. You know, here's the thing. You wanna do these videos, and I've been promising for a couple of weeks to do a bit of a review of Leaving Neverland, the Michael Jackson documentary on HBO. And I'm trying to find a time to do the video where it doesn't get caught up or overlooked, I guess, in the news cycle of the day. And I decided that that was kind of a waste of time to write, to wait for the right moment, and that I should just go ahead and do this since it appears the news cycle is gonna be busy for a while. And that is not a political statement, that is just a reality. Um, so first of all, what I am not gonna discuss about this HBO documentary is whether or not I think Michael Jackson did these things to these, in particular, the two the two boys who are now men who they who the uh, documentary covered, and I am not going to approach the subject of which many people have discussed that of course this documentary was done. Um, after Michael Jackson's death, where um, he cannot answer for these allegations. I'm not gonna discuss that. That's for the courts to decide, and apparently his family has filed a lawsuit against HBO. All of those are irrelevant in this arena. So what I am gonna be discussing today is in watching the documentary, which is two parts. Um, if you're interested in, in that, you should watch it. Um, I am not sitting through that R. Kelly stuff. I just, I don't have the, um, I don't think I'm gonna have the patience for it after seeing his uh, interview with Gail King. So, um, more importantly, Michael Jackson um, was more intriguing to me because uh, these lawsuits and these allegations came up while he was alive, and now a lot of this information has been unearthed. And um, I found that to be interesting, and because he was such a beloved figure, really his whole life, he was so beloved that, um, you watch it going in with one idea, um, and then you may move one way or the other towards being convinced, not being convinced. But like I said, that, that sort of thing is irrelevant here. The two things that I wanna focus on in watching the videos were um, one video that I had covered before, which was, um, or something I had covered within a video before, which was characteristics found in adult males were sexually abused as children. Now, whether or not you believe that Michael Jackson did or did not abuse these two young boys, um, I can tell you that in observing them, they displayed many characteristics when they described their life and, and their experiences and how they felt growing up. Um, it, it was very, it, it, it illustrated very much some of the characteristics that adult males do exhibit when they were sexually abused as children. Um, I know if at least one, if not both of the boys had uh, suicidal ideations or attempts. Uh, they had issues with depression. Uh, and they had um, issues with um, you know, lying, obviously, because they were, they were not telling the truth about uh, things that had gone on. Was that a lie to protect someone who they cared about? Yes, but there was a lying, and that lying begets other lies. Um, at least one of the men uh, did have um, addiction issues, that is definitely um, a characteristic. Uh, not that there aren't other reasons that somebody might be an alcoholic, but you can kind of you know, connect the dots here. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to cover 
in this was the, the very real issue of grooming. And grooming is done with um, sex offenders to adults in major and minor ways. But in particular with children, it is done and oftentimes, as was illustrated in this uh, documentary, was that the grooming extends beyond the victim, uh, the primary victim. The secondary victims are the family. And it was very obvious that, gr obvious that grooming was done not just with these children, um, but with their families. The mothers and fathers and siblings of these boys were groomed. They, it started out small with the children, with compliments, admiration for their talents, um, invitations to uh, the Neverland Ranch, um, you know, um, pri you know, uh, things to give to the parents, things to give to the family, trips, houses, um, financial help, whatever it was. And this is all part of the grooming and the stories between the two boys, unless they sat down and planned this all out, which I have no idea how much, if any communication has gone on between them, their stories were nearly identical in the way that they and their families were approached. And like I said, this grooming, when you watch the video, when you watch the document documentary, you say, how could these people be so stupid? It is because it is part of the grooming. When somebody, and I'm not saying I would have made the decisions those parents uh, made, and you may say I never would have made the decision those parents made, but when the grooming starts out in small ways and is built up in increments, that is when some things, when somebody knows expertly what they are doing in the way of grooming, it is when people, uh, they find ways to earn people's trust and therefore the people don't really notice how much they are being groomed or they dismiss certain red flags. Um, and certainly in the case of the children themselves, this was somebody who they loved and admired to begin with, which is the case in, in most cases, when I was working for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in the state prison, and um, I had uh, the, uh, the inmates there as my students, um, <laughs> there is a high percentage of men whose victims are stepdaughters, stepsons, or even their own children. Not that all sex offenders have children as victims, not, not even close, but there is a disproportionate amount, let's put it that way. And, and it's because these are people who trust these abusers. They love them, they trust them, they put a roof over your head and food on your table, and for a time they have cared about you and for some reason they have gained their trust, they have gained their love, and then they use that trust and love against these people. So I can tell you that just stepping back from who Michael Jackson was, what he meant to the world, what he meant to his fans, and just objectively looking at these two men in their descriptions, um, if they weren't abused by Michael Jackson, they were both abused by somebody because the descriptions of the characteristics they had throughout their lives into adulthood and the description of the grooming was quite extensive. And um, so I'm, I'm inclined to believe their stories um, insofar as that I do believe they were abused. Like I said, it is not for me to necessarily draw conclusions about their abuser, but I can tell you just from looking at them and hearing their stories, it is like textbook stuff.
So you can watch it, you can draw your own conclusions. Let me know if you watch the whole R. Kelly thing. I just can't, I just can't. Um, but anyway, I'm very glad you watched this. I don't know if it enlightened you at all, um, but please subscribe to this channel. Please feel free, as some of you have, to reach out with uh, reach out to me through Facebook, through Instagram, through Twitter, um, or through this account, through this YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to think of something that I'd like to cover for our next video, so stay tuned. And until next time, be well.